In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Peace be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who willed that your word should take on the reality of human flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary, grant, we pray, that we who confess our Redeemer to be God and man may merit to become partakers even in his divine nature, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz saying, ask for a sign from the Lord your God. 
Let it be as deep as the netherworld or as high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David, is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary your God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall be with child and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The word of the Lord. to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice or oblation you wish not, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Burnt offerings or sin offerings you sought not. Then said I, Behold, I come. Here I am, Lord, I come. Call it is prescribed for me, but to, to your will, O oh my God, is my delight, and your law is within my heart. Here I am, Lord, I come to do. your justice in the vast assembly. I did not restrain my lips as you, O Lord, know. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Your justice I kept not hid within my heart. Your faithfulness and your salvation I have spoken of. I have made no secret of your kindness and your truth in the vast assembly. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, it is impossible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. For this reason, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocausts and sin offerings, you took no delight. Then I said, As it is written of me in the scroll, Behold, I come to do your will, O God. First, he says, sacrifices and offerings, holocausts and sin offerings, you neither desired nor delighted in. These are offered according to the law. Then he says, behold, I will come to do your will. He takes away the first to establish the second. 
By this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled on what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord, May be, it be done to me according to your word. And then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Again, I want to thank all of you for being here today. I want to thank the regular 12 o'clock mass crowd who um, kind of opened your hearts and your arms to welcome us this day. I want to say a word of welcome to the freshman class, right? From C Cathedral Preparatory High School. They had already prepared a day of recollection here, so they've been here all morning praying and growing spiritually and you take part in this act of consecration. This is a big deal, by the way. So I'm glad you're here for that. And thank you for helping to make it a little solemn 
I appreciate it. And, um, and thanks to all of you who responded to the invitation to join with Pope Francis, who asked the whole world to join together in what he called one chorus of praise, one choral piece of music. It's, it's like the, you know, a choir, worldwide choir, choir, all joining voices together and singing the ha same hymn, turning to God. You know, when you think about it, what he's asking of us is kind of amazing. When you think about time zones and all of that, our regular feasts and celebrations have a certain rhythm. So, you know, like when the Easter be vigil begins, every hour somewhere in the world, somebody's beginning that prayer. And that just cascades through a period of time. Well, here we did something a little bit different. We all stopped in place and joined together to be one. That sense of unity is really part of the act of consecration. It's, it's not just one person offering a prayer, but of us all gathering together. The letter to the Hebrews says, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. In holocaust and sin offers, you took no delight. But behold, I come to do your will, O God. Today, as we celebrate the Feast of the Annunciation, we remember that moment, you know this, right? When the angel Gabriel came to Mary and announced the good news that she would be the mother of Jesus, the mother of God, and asked her to help in God's plan, to take part in God's plan. And of course, Mary said a great big resounding, yes. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. When Jesus came into the world, here's what happened. God came into the world to show us God's own will, to do God's own will. God came to show us the way. God came in a miraculous way, right? The angel went to Mary and that was kind of miraculous. That, and just said, you're going to be the mother of God. In a miraculous way, God stepped in. And, and think about it. That moment, just, we just heard about it in the gospel. That moment changed the course of of human history forever. Jesus said, I come to do your will. And then we hear, by this will, we have been consecrated through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That yes some nine months before Jesus was even born, was a yes to everything. It was a yes to the birth in Bethlehem. It was a yes to Jesus doing God's work, proclaiming God's words, healing in God's name, being God among us. But it was even a yes to that. It was a yes to that cross. And by that yes, by that will, by Jesus coming to do God's will, we've been consecrated. There's that word that's been used today, right? Consecrated. That word consecrated means to be set apart, to be sanctified. In a sense, it means to be dedicated in a unique way to God. And so what we did today was... We said this prayer, consecrating, setting aside, asking that God will, will transform the hearts of people and change the ways of war. We asked, as we consecrate, we turn over, we, we like surrender to God, that land of Ukraine and, Ush and Russia, asking God to bring peace there, to transform hearts. We all know there are a lot of hearts that need to be transformed, don't we? 
a lot of hearts toward violence. But you see, here's the thing. You can't just sit here and say, God, change that other person. Leave me alone. Change that other person. A con an act of consecration means that we join ourselves in that prayer. And we ask that we be consecrated. What does that mean? Well, it means that we join with Jesus. It means... That we let Jesus' call take root in our hearts. That it means that we be a little like Mary and say yes to whatever God is asking of us. You see, Mary's whole life was a consecration. Her whole life was a consecration. Setting aside, setting her whole life aside so that God's will could be accomplished through her so that God's great plan could be accomplished through her so that God's great miracle could happen through her her whole life was a consecration and so today what we want to do is we want to be able to listen to let the voice of God speak to us within so that wherever God is leading us in life Whatever God is asking of us, we might be ready to hear it. We might have the kind of ears that are ready to hear it. That we might have the courage to be able to stand up and do what we hear ourselves, be, we hear God asking us to do. That we might find our life's work, that we might find our life's direction by listening to God. Sacrifice and oblation you didn't desire, but a body you prepared for me. Behold, I come to do your will. That's, that's the consecration. Now you might say, oh man, that's a little hard, isn't it? And you know, we just did this worldwide prayer for peace. It's a nice gesture, but what difference is it going to make? That's an easy thing to think, right? You know, nice thought. Wouldn't it be nice? Won't it work out? Wouldn't that be great if it works? But no, we stopped with faith and we said, we really want to expect this to happen. We want God's will to reign. We want God's will to come through. And you might say, well, you know, again, nice but sounds kind of tough. But did you hear what angel Gabriel said to Mary, the last words? She said, nothing is impossible for God. Let's be honest. God's already done some pretty amazing things beyond our wildest imaginations. God has already stepped into human history. God has already decided to live our human life and performed all kinds of miracles. God decided to be born of a virgin mother. God decided to give himself totally God even surrendered himself to the most painful of deaths on a cross. And God rose from the dead. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. God came to live our life and performed all kinds of miracles. If God can do all that, nothing is impossible for God. And that needs to be our echoing prayer this day. We offered that prayer for peace. We consecrated Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We made the pledge ourselves to consecrate our own lives, to, to turn our own hearts over. And we asked that we might be transformed so that the world might be transformed. Now, it comes down to believing. Now it comes down to letting God's way be done.
because today is the solemn feast day, the church asks us to recite the creed to renew our profession of faith. However, because of this special feast day, twice a year, today and on Christmas, the church asks us to genuflect when we get to those words about Jesus be, that, be, taking on flesh and becoming man. So if you watch, we'll just bend down on one knee, okay? Together. I believe in one God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Following the example of Mary's faith in God, let us entrust our petitions to him. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, may the Holy Spirit protect and guide us in our mission to proclaim the truth of salvation to all the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Lord open their hearts to work tirelessly in protecting the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For the sick, may the healing consolation of Christ be upon them and make them whole. Let us pray to the Lord. For this faith community, both present and virtual, may God help us to trust always in his saving power. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of the Ukraine, May our prayers for peace in their beloved land be realized through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Frank Sorrentino and Shariah and Rajama Pudotha, for whom this Mass is offered, May they experience the mercy of God and enjoy fullness of life with him in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers that we bring to you today through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is number 877. Praise we the Lord this day, number 877. Yes, Lord. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, Almighty God, to accept your church's offering so that she who is aware that her beginnings lie in the incarnation of your only begotten Son may rejoice to celebrate his mysteries on this solemnity who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your heart. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For the Virgin Mary heard with faith that, Christ, that the Christ was to be born among men and for men's sake by the overpower, overshadowing power of the Holy Spirit. Lovingly she bore him in her immaculate womb that the promise to the children of Israel might come about and the hope of the nations be accomplished beyond all telling. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory of yours is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy. But only say the word, and my soul shall be given. Our communion hymn is Sing We of the Blessed Mother, number 895, number 895. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Confirm in our minds the mysteries of the true faith, we pray, O Lord, so that, confessing that he who was conceived of the Virgin Mary is true God and true man, we may, through the saving power of his resurrection, merit to attain eternal joy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. The closing hymn is number 900, O Sanctissima. Number nine, zero, zero.